Marinero, the sick podcast following game three of the first round of the playoffs between the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Final score, Montreal one, Toronto two. And the Toronto Maple Leafs take a 2-1 series lead. A Leafs team, once again, without John Tavares, who was knocked out of game one. It was announced right before the game that Nick Foligno was out with a lower body injury and he wouldn't play in game three. That means that Kerfoot ends up being the second line centerman for the Toronto Maple Leafs. You would think you have to take advantage of that opportunity. The score line makes it look like it was close. And yes, with a little bit of luck, the Canadians could have probably even tied it up in period number three. But I, for one, am extremely disappointed the way the Montreal Canadiens came out on Monday night. Extremely disappointed. First of all, if it's not for Carey Price, the Canadians lose the game by at least four goals. At least. At one point, they had no business being in the game, and yet they were trailing by a score of 2-1, to one, and they had no business being in the game. They should have been down 6-1 to one at that point, or 5-1. to one. Anyway, um, they just... Their defensemen cannot make a pass stick to stick. If it's not Jeff Petrie, they have a real hard time of making a pass tape to tape. God awful time. And this this whole conservative approach in which they approach this hockey game, a game that saw Dano center Lekkinen and Josh Anderson to start the game. Suzuki with Yoel Armia. And Cole Caulfield. Yasperi Kakanyemi with Brendan Gallagher and Tyler Toffoli. And Paul Byron centering a fourth line with uh, Thomas Tatar and with Corey Perry. And not much was happening. I mean, not much at all. It's a sick podcast. The show's brought to you by Essentia, the world's only natural memory foam mattress. Go to myessentia.com slash sickpod. And see why Essentia is the mattress of choice for many athletes, including over 25% of professional hockey players. Use code SICKPOD for a free pillow with your purchase. Essentia Beyond Organic Sleep. Speaking of pillows and sleeping, speaking of sleep, I mean, the Canadians put me to sleep tonight. I mean, there were no goals in period number one. The shots on goal were 7-6 to six for Toronto. And a couple of minutes into the hockey game, the Montreal Canadiens went on the power play for four minutes when Alex Galchenyuk, high-sticked Brendan Gallagher, who drew blood. And uh, the Canadians, they had nothing to show for that power play. The best scoring chance was a pass that went to Cole Caulfield on the right side. He rang one off the crossbar. Other than that, absolutely nothing to show for it. They go to period number two. They find out that uh, Arturi Lekkinen is not going to be able to play the rest of the game. He was knocked out in what appeared to be a shot to his head. Uh, but we'll find out a little bit more. But anyway, Lekkinen knocked out of the game. William Nylander with Alex Galchenyuk losing a very key faceoff, and Toronto gains possession of the puck. It ends up on Nylander's stick. He circles, he shoots, it redirects off of Ben Sherratt. It beats Carey Price. Beats Carey Price, who had been unbelievable up until that point. I mean, in period number one, Jason Spezza pretty much had an open net, and Carey Price came across and in desperation stuck on his stick. It's one of the best saves I've seen in the playoffs. So you know what? Uh, credit to Price. I thought, once again, he was fantastic. The only reason why they were in the game. Nick Suzuki. The play goes from Tatar to Perry to Suzuki down the right side. He beats Jack Campbell with a with a, a far wrist shot. Uh, and it's, it's tied at one. What was it? A couple of minutes after that, Morgan Riley gets a pass from Mitch Marner. He comes in, he beats Carey Price up high, and the Toronto Maple Leafs take a 2-1 lead. You know what the shots on goal were in period number two? It's embarrassing, though, eh? They were 20 shots for Toronto in the second, eight shots for Montreal in the second. So after two periods of play, 27 shots for Toronto, 14 shots for the Montreal Canadiens, the Toronto Maple Leafs had doubled the Canadians in shots. They had doubled the Canadians in scoring chances. And once again, uh, it, it was ugly. It was really, really ugly. 
The Canadians were not moving their feet. At times, the Toronto Maple Leafs had the Canadians pinned in their zone for a couple of minutes. At one point, it's like midway through the second period. Now, keep in mind, the Canadians scored two goals in game number one. They scored only one goal in game number two. Uh, they got one goal in game number three. And midway through the second period, they showed a stat. I think Cole Caulfield had played two minutes and 18 seconds. That's it. Why? Well, he's a young player and he doesn't have a lot of experience and he might make some mistakes. Give me a break. I, I, I cannot take this ultra conservative. And listen, listen to me. It can't be that they have the wrong players all the time, right? Because how many players have, have come and gone through this organization in the last eight or nine years, right? They change players all the time. Pacioretty used to be here. Galchenyuk used to be here. Subban used to be here. Domi used to be here. Those guys are not here anymore. They went out to get to Anderson. They went out to get to Foley. These guys have, to Foley's done nothing so far, three games into the playoffs. Josh Anderson has one goal. The Canadians only have four goals through three games. It can't be that it's the players all the time. They keep changing the players. It's their ultra conservative mentality and approach. It's cautious. It's safe. It's don't take chances. Don't play the skilled guys. Don't double shift your best players. Don't play the offensive guys. Don't trust the young players. And, you know, I, I, I just, I, I can't take it anymore. No, I'm not going to take it anymore. I really, I'm not. Now, so if you think it's the players, well, explain to me why the Canadians after in period number three were so much better and they outshot Toronto 15 to 2. If you think it's just the, why, why? And I'm going to tell you why. Because they take that ultra conservative, cautious, very safe approach. Huh? They don't open it up in period number one. They defend, 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 defend in period number two. They try and, uh, you know, uh, weather off the storm. They try and block shots. They're pinned in their zone. And then all of a sudden, in period number three, the clock, the clock becomes the enemy. That's what happens. The clock becomes the enemy. And once the clock becomes the enemy, oh my God, oh, we're running out of time here. We need to score a goal right away. So what do you do then? You start taking some chances. You start playing some of your younger guys. You start giving more ice type to some of your more offensive players. And at that point, the other team takes the pedal off the metal because you know what? They're winning the game. You attack a little bit more. It's, I, I can't, this is not a winning formula. Brian Wild of Global TV Montreal tweeted out at the end of the game that in the last 31 playoff games, the Montreal Canadiens have played in the last 31. They have scored 63 goals. Two goals a game is 62. They've scored 63. How do you expect to win playoff games with regularity? Because you could win one every now and then, scoring two goals the way Toronto did. But how do you expect to win with, in, with regularity? How do you expect to win playoff series? I'm telling you, man, it's unbelievable. Excellent photo. Great variety of gear, whether you're into photography, video, podcast, professional staff at the store and online to help you choose the gear that you really need. Take a picture of that game, and I don't want to see the Canadians play that kind of game again. I, I've had enough. And by the way, by the way, the three best Canadians players tonight, and it wasn't even close, Carey Price, Nick Suzuki, and Cole Caulfield, right? So one is their franchise player, and the other two are the two of the three youngest forwards they have on the team. And on Tuesday night, they're going to play back-to-back. -back, and, you know, I'm, I don't want to see any of these older guys who have a hard time moving. I want to see more of Caulfield. I want to see more of Suzuki. I want to see more of Kakanyemi. And can you please, please... Bring Alexander Romanov in the lineup. I don't, it's not like, it's not like John Merrill is a Norris Trophy candidate that you got to keep him in. I mean, what, what does he bring to the lineup other than playing safe? I mean, and if you think that um, Merrill, because he plays the right side and you want Romanov on the left side, well, then take Kulak out of the lineup. And I like Kulak, really I do, but I really like Romanov. 
You know, throughout the, a year ago, Mark Bergevin went to Russia to convince Romanov to come over to the Canadians to burn the first year of his contract. They made him watch in the bubble because he wasn't allowed to play per the rules. Mark Bergevin told us that Romanov a year ago, more than a year ago, about a year and a half ago, could have stepped in and already been a third-pairing defenseman in the National Hockey League. He played the entire regular season. He's the best skater they have on the blue line. He's the best puck mover they have on the blue line, or Petrie, or second best. He's, um, he's the most mobile they have. And he's the best hitter they have. In game three, Simmons absolutely obliterated Brendan Gallagher with a hit, whether you call it a headshot or not, whatever. He obliterated him. Gallagher was down. It was, it was, he obliterated him. Got up. He's got all the heart in the world. He got up. You think he doesn't feel it? In a series like this, where maybe your best bet, the way they're playing is to try and physically take it to Toronto, wouldn't it make sense to put your defenseman, your player in the lineup that has the best timing on hits, hits the hardest, has taken guys out early on in the season. He was there to play the entire regular season with the exception of a couple of games. But come playoff time, he's out of the lineup. You know why? Because he has to watch so he can learn. I got a question for you. Maybe it's a stupid question. Won't he learn more if he plays other than watching? Like, you know, they told us the same thing about Cole Caulfield. He had to watch. Well, after watching him play game three, everyone realized that he had to have started the series and had to have played because he's good. He's better than most of the other guys on the team. You can say the same thing for Romano. Oh, he made a couple of mistakes during the regular season. Why don't we stop looking at, you know, the fact that he made a couple of mistakes and start looking at what he brings to the team? I got, oh man. If you go to sportbuffshop.com, for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and more, use code SICK15 for 15% off on all of their items. All of their items. And that includes Montreal Canadiens gear. Ask them if they can give you something with Cole Caulfield or Nick Suzuki, the brightest lights. By the way, Thomas Tatar would gone shotless after game one and game two. I, I thought his game was better. I thought his game was better tonight. Um... He was involved in the Canadians' only goal. He got an assist. He had five hits in this hockey game. He did have a shot. He tried to wrap around, which almost scored. You could tell that he was trying to make things happen. Tyler Toffoli, I don't know, man. He just, he's looking for it, and it's not happening. But I say this. If he had his best chemistry with Suzuki, well, then why don't you put a line of Suzuki, Tyler Toffoli, and Cole Caulfield and put them together for game four. I mean, clearly it's not working. Try and get them going that way. Try and get the offensive guys more involved. It was a terrible night, by the way, for Phil Deneau. It was a terrible night. He got eight up in the faceoff circle, especially versus Austin Matthews. It's a couple of games now that Austin Matthews is just absolutely killing him. Uh, Phil Deneau gave up on the back check on what led to be the game-winning goal in game two. Uh, he was awful for game three, absolutely awful. And I know that Austin Matthews didn't score, but still, Phil Deneau just was not very good at all. And and this guy wants his money at the end of the season. He's not going to get it. He's not going to get it. And by the way, by the way, when you start asking for five plus million dollars, you need to generate offense. If you can't generate offense at that point, you're not worth five plus million dollars. I'm sorry. Anyway, who, who do you got for game four? It better be the Montreal Canadiens, and they better win game four. Because if the Canadiens go down three games to one with the psyche of this team and the mentality of this team, and that they're going to go back to Toronto to try and play a very, very defensive game. Listen, they won game one because Carey Price absolutely stood on his head, and they got an incredible goal from Paul Byron. If it wasn't for Price, they'd be down three games to nothing. Anyway, you want to bet on this series? You can place your bets on my bookie. Go to mybookie.ag slash the sick podcast and use code sick picks for a 50% deposit bonus or use code pick 10 for $10 in the free play without even depositing bet, win, get paid. What's your bet? My bet is Cole Caulfield's going to score because he had a couple of looks 
in game three at a crossbar. He had a chance late in the game, but Justin Hall slid in front of him face first to block a shot. That's what you got to do come playoff time. You got to be willing to put your body on the line the way Hall did. And hopefully that serves as an, ex as an example to the Montreal Canadiens. What is it with this team and playoff failures? Marinero, you can listen to us on the, the sick podcast on YouTube and uh, all podcast platforms. And you can check us out the video version, of course, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. Tell your friends about it. This podcast is sick. Until we do this again after game four, but for the next 24 hours, I'm not going to take it. not gonna take it anymore it's the sick podcast follow us on instagram facebook and twitter at the sick podcast canadians wake up <laughs>